Congrats on 600 episodes of Aussie Tech Edge, Glenn. I know I promised Dancing Girls and an F-18 flyover, a live band and fireworks in this video, but all I managed to do was the fireworks. One out of four, not too bad. Anyway, I've done some research on how well 600 episodes stacks up against well-known TV shows, and um, you've beaten quite some, you know, beat some good ones. On the top of the list, we've got Who Wants to Be a Millionaire UK at 591 episodes, Lassie, which is a classic, 588 episodes, Pop Shop, another classic, 582 episodes, American Idol, 574, Survivor US, 540, Homicide and Blue Healers, both at 510, All Saints, 494, Law and Order is 456, Dragnet, uh, all four series with 450 episodes each, and then rounding out the top is Law and Order SVU, 434. So like I said, 600 episodes, great effort. Well done, mate. See ya. G'day everyone and welcome to Aussie Tech Heads episode 600, the 6th of September 2018. That's my grandfather's birthday today. How good's that? All right, so uh, happy birthday, Grandpa. Um, yes, we are brought to you by ATH Web Hosting at uh, .com.au for all your hosting needs, shared hosting, SSL certificates, and register your domain name or transfer it over. Drag and drop website builder, free to pro and business plans, uh, operating on the SSD drives and immediate activation, uh, script installs of WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal, all the good CMSs. There's probably about over 300 scripts that you can install uh, from surveys to whatever, Magento, got a story about Magento, you might not want to install that after you hear about this Magento story coming up. Uh, but anyway, other than that, don't forget we are on the AussieTechRadio.com or you jump on the TuneIn Radio app and uh, and search for Aussie Tech Radio. You'll find it. it's a wall-to-wall, 24-7, uh, just back-to-back -back Australian podcasts, uh, all downloaded each week. Uh, so just jump in any time and just listen to uh, one of the shows. The new shows are uploaded every Friday. You can get us on facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads, youtube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads, and the show notes are at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast. We've got the Twitters at Aussie Tech Heads at Aussie Tech News. Haven't mentioned that one for a while. You can subscribe to that or follow that one, and it'll just pop two or three news items into your Twitter news feed. So nothing, nothing too heavy, just a couple every now and then to keep you rocking. Uh, thanks to uh, the Shane at the My Tech Opinion. You would have just saw a video from him at the start of the show. We'll have a quick chat about that in a second. But yeah, Shane and Phil, they produce the My Tech Opinion, and it's a program that takes a longer look at what's happening in the world of tech. Each episode is a brief look at the latest in news and then a deeper look into, the tech, into a particular technology-based topic. Uh, Aussie Tech Crypto, Wooshka, uh, uh, Wooshka, that's where we uh, hosted the, the show, Aussie Tech Crypto, Aussie Max Zone. I was just thinking, why well, I, I misspoke there with the Wooshka thing was, uh, I think I'm going to be on the Aussie Tech, the Aussie Tech Crypto, the Aussie, what is it, My Tech Opinion pretty soon, all over the place, at 600, too much for me. All right, uh, let's see who else is uh, hosting this week, same as usual, but let's go to Joe first. Hey Joe, how you doing? I'm good, thanks, Glenn. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Had a busy week? I sure have. I've still been working on the jukebox. I finally worked out how to get the um, app working on the uh, smartphone uh, to be able to control the um, the jukebox software. Right, right. So it looks like it's all systems go. You'll get there? Absolutely. It's all working now. Good stuff. And uh, Jordan, how you doing? Oh, I'm good, mate. Yeah, good, good. Jordan, he's a, he's the resident little uh, tech helper around here, anyway. Because <laughs> he... yeah, well, I don't know what happened. Will's not around to hold the fort. Where is he? I don't and know. Dace could be could be helping out. <laughs> well, Will's computer would have blown up three times uh, while we were. No, <laughs> Will's the master of tech when it comes to podcasting, isn't he? I thought they're the two greatest podcasters in the world. Uh, but yeah, no, I was referring to um, you gave me a fair bit of help through the week trying to oh. to, to get this Virtue Min server going. So thank you for that. Uh, so you know your way around that. That's pretty well. So that's um, yeah. It's I pretty think good. I learned something too. So yeah, from you. So oh, well, it's a it's a a win-win. Good, good to see. Good to see. 
Uh, look, let's just start off. Well, let's just talk about yeah. So this week is our six hundredth episode. So it's been look. Uh, that's a that's a lot of episodes, isn't it? And as Shane pointed out just before that uh, yeah, more episodes than Cop Shop. Um, what more episodes than Who Wants to Be a Millionaire or something? And uh, all these other shows. And he mentioned I forget already what they were. But uh, look, I suppose it is. Uh, it's a fair few episodes to come and do it each week. But you know, this is what I like doing. This is what we guys we all like doing. That's why we're here every week. And um, look, we get emails through the week, and we thank those people like. We, we, sometimes we don't mention them on the show. Sometimes we do. And uh, look, it's always great to hear from you. Like, uh, so what, I've got one here actually from a Damien. So good on you, Damien. Uh, thanks for joining us on the uh, 600th. He goes, hey, Glenn and guys, I heard you talking about Android launches last week. That's right. We were because I've found a new, a whole new life now that I've found these launches. Uh, so Damien continues, I've tried a few and Nova launcher is pretty hard to go past. So many options for customizing your usage. I updated to Prime and have used it for a few years now with no problems and would not change. Um, so other apps that he uses is Waze, My Phone Explore, Power Amp, iHeartRadio, Pocket Cast, HD Widgets, Always On, uh, several for home Oh, theatre. I don't understand that one. LG TV, Swift Key for emails, and uh, AUS Rain, the bomb site. So there's a few. There's a few good ones there if you want to uh, get some of those. Uh, the podcast, the Pocket Cast, I use, which is really good. I do like that one. The Waze, I have used before on the, on my iPhone, and uh, yeah. So it looks like a couple of good ones there. Oh, look, I might just post that list in the show notes this week. Uh, so if anyone wants to see a few few Android apps they might want to uh, uh, look into. And uh, and also a shout out to Mar- Marcus. Hi, Marcus. You made the 600th too. Good stuff. Now, uh, what are you guys? You guys are both Android, aren't you? I think from memory. Um, yeah, I've got Android on my phone. Yeah, and so you launches, do they, all these do those apps that I just mentioned, do they sound familiar? Well, yeah, you- they do sound familiar. I actually don't use one of those. I actually use the um, smart launcher on my one. Right, and what what does that give you? What what does it, that do? It's sort of like a bit of like an iPhone look. Um, it's very easy to to get around to. Right. Yes. All right. It's good. Yeah, I put one. Look, I'll probably give this Nova launcher a bit of go. What's what was yours, Joe? A smart launcher. Yeah, it's called smart launcher. Well, I might have a go at that one as well because uh, yeah, look, I've got some I don't know some other thing that I download that makes it look like an Apple, but there's some things that just don't work properly. So I need a new one. Um, and what and I think, uh, Jordan, were you in the Microsoft launches? Is that what you've got on yeah, yours? Yeah, look, I find that the, the Microsoft launcher to be fantastic. It's called um, Arrow. Right. Um, yeah, it's it's um it's really good. But I've, look, I've tried a, a, quite a few of them. There's one here. I'm just trying to bring it up. I'm, uh, I'm searching the App Store when you ask me. There was a couple. Nova Launcher. I've tried that. It's it's pretty good. Oh yes, good. Um, there, there was another really good one. There's the Smart Launcher one. I can see that. The yeah, arrow, you, arrow was there. Um, Go launch is another one that was good. Yep. There there's was another one that's just an, a more obscure one that I, I can't remember the name of it. I was looking for it. But there's heaps out there, isn't there? Like it's a, it is oh, a whole there's, new world. There's plenty. Mm, mm. Absolutely plenty. Yeah. So Tons. you can spend a lot of time. I'm now on the Google Pixel, and I haven't changed launches launches for that. Right. I only put the uh, the Arrow launcher on the you know on the older iPhones or the Samsung like. That touch was really annoyed me on 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 the Samsung. So, but mm. since I've had the Pixel, I've just been using the stock on the stock one on that, which I think is just Android. Now, <laughs> you know are we what? are we allowed to talk about the new phone? Of I don't yours? think they can hear me. No, yeah, well, I don't we, think they we, can hear me. We can just talk. We, if you listened last week, you'll know why we we can't say too much about it <laughs> you have to go and listen it's nothing it's nothing nothing dramatic don't worry but uh, uh but I just was, but just hmm. just tell us about was it is it a well, i was going to do a review wasn't i but i didn't but i picked it up this week there it right. is in the box right um, for the for the boy for his birthday i'll try not to talk too loud through the yeah, wall that's all right um, don't say no say no more the Xiaomi, say no more. The Xiaomi Mi A2 Lite I discovered I didn't even realize I bought the Lite <laughs> right <laughs> but the Lite version has headphone jack and and SD card and it has a 4000 milliamp battery and all that sort of stuff whereas the the next model up has a bigger screen but it doesn't have a headphone jack and oh, yeah. uses USB C um, and I don't think it has an SD card reader but that's the I've already taken I haven't turned it off but very um very well built. Yeah, they're not too bad. I like mine, the the Mio. Dual cameras. Mm. Yeah, Coming that's good. back. 
Yeah. When's um, um when when's that getting switched on? When's the I birthday? Know they take two SIM cards. You should see the, the the SIM tray that comes out of it's got like two SIM cards and the SD card all in the one yeah. tray. It's fantastic. Uh, you know, just really. like a that's look, pretty cool. Like like cool. a magician, Jordan. You know, pulling the, the scarf out of the pocket. Yeah. Look at the <laughs> SIM card, SIM card, SIM card. <laughs> um, and it comes with a case too. Did you know that? How's that? I opened the box and there's a case in there. Oh, that's all right, isn't it? Did you get a case with yours? No, I, no, I didn't. No, I ripped off. It, it, yeah, it's it's a um, it's a secret case. I didn't know it was it was hidden in the package. Look at this. It's, um, where is it? In the back behind. Yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Good stuff. So I just got that off eBay. I didn't get that from Kogan like you did. Did you get a a uh, Aussie plug in it, or did it have it? Uh... No, it just came with European. It's just USB. Plug it into anything. I mean, oh yeah, that's right. We've got a uh, a charger here that we use that charges all of our phones. It's got like about ten ports on it, sitting on the kitchen bench. Yep. And everybody just comes in and plugs their phones in at once, so we don't even use the the, the power pack here. Mm. So we well, get those power points now that you. You, you, the PowerPoints have got the, the USBs USB in, them. in them. Yeah, I know. Yeah. How good are they? It's going off. Yeah. You've been to those, Joe? There, hey? That sounds pretty good there. Two SIM cards and a um, memory card holder too. Is that right? Yeah, that SD, SD card. I think it's up to 250 gig or something. Jeez. Oh, that's pretty good. I'll be interested in seeing how you go with that. Let us know how you go with it. $274 it cost. Free delivery from a guy, one of the one of the ones on eBay. I tried to pick one that was in Australia because I wanted to get it as quick as I can. And if there's any problems with it, I can have time to send it back before the big day. So mm. when is the big day? Not till early uh, 9th of October. So oh okay, not too long to wait. But if it's good, you know, I might but get the second one because the daughter's one's following that a month later. So what price point did you? Is it at? That one was two seventy. Yeah, that's all you know, right. that's cheap, I looked it, it up and then I realized that the, 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 the next one up, not the light version, the next one's like another hundred bucks. It's like yeah, 300 right. bucks or something. Yeah. So I'm happy. Look, I'm happy with it so far. I haven't turned it on. I've just been down today and picked up a SIM <laughs> card for Belong. Right. Yes. Yes. I thought because the data banking does sound really good and the kids don't need answering machines, but. No, no. We'll start with Belong because I heard that they're going to they're bringing the answering machine. Yes, I read read an article that it is coming. It's just a matter of time. So I thought we'll start with that. Hmm. Maybe one day I'll get there. Look, I possibly would go to Belong once the answering machine that the the voice mail came in, uh, hmm. but uh, yeah, not at the minute. But like look, one of my biggest frustrations through the week, and I don't know if anyone out there can help me, but uh, is email signatures and especially HTML email signatures. Um, I wanted to make a email signature up, you know, with uh, the 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 phone numbers as URL links, you know, um, the the e, the mail to and the tell links, you know, so they activate, and also mm-hmm. the URL for the for the web page and the email. But I didn't want them to underline or change color. Now, I, I did the proper, you know, the proper coding or whatever you want to call it to the decoration none I used so they you know so there would be no underlining but as soon as it went into as soon as I sent it all that underlining and the blueness all came back and it was driving me crazy to the point where I think I figured it out as much as that I think when I put it into Outlook the desktop in Outlook it strips away some of this HTML code it just drives you insane it really does like in this day and age this is my rant for the week uh, is is why is a HTML signature in an email so damn hard? Well, don't I'll give you a straight up answer straight away. I didn't know you were doing this, but don't 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 do it through Outlook for starters. Just <laughs> oh, but just uh, just grab the files and paste them in the um paste the files in the directory in the signature rec- uh, signature directory under App Data or wherever it is App Data Microsoft Outlook mm-hmm. or whatever. It is. Did that, but it still strips and away. You, yeah. Put it, make sure you've coded your files right and dump them in there. Yep. And then um, it'll it'll then you can then I think browse to it or pick it up from there and it doesn't change it. It does. It still does. Because well, I still use signatures. I've I've got HTML emails that I make and send and stuff. And yeah. do they do they send underlined and turning blue? No. And what do you send from? Uh, I I cre- created an actual email demo for my band so rather than sending them to a website it's got all the links for all the song lists and audio files and everything and all the pictures and everything all as a html it's a full html email and i save that and send it yeah and you get no lines no and you say no but it's been a while since i created it so i can't remember whether there was much in the way of css or anything that had to be 
Are you yeah. uh, sending it through Outlook or through something else? And sent through. I just I open it up in Outlook now and send it. Right. Well, but, I, I but be... that's not a signature. That's an actual email that I created. But the signature, you've got to do. You've got to create the signature in a file and then dump it in the. Mm, doesn't work. But look, I'd be yeah. It, it just drives you insane because I had a guy that sent me one of the one of a signature. Well, I had a guy that sent me a signature. No links. No, no underlines. All nice and pretty, you know. And I went, oh, this is nice. And so at the at the end of the day, I sent it to my Outlook, and then I sent it back again. And when it came back, the links and underlines were there. And that's and then I started looking up the, the Microsoft and the Outlook, and they said, yep, it's a problem with Outlook. Um, even with the app, I thought, well, let me see if I can put the signature on the app. No, you can't put a HTML signature on the app. And it's yeah, just... just don't paste it through Microsoft, through Outlook, because it's changing it. You've got to mm. create the file and save the file and then open the file so that it doesn't get changed. That's what I would have thought. Yeah, well, I'll have to. Have, I'll, I'll I'll talk to you later about it and relook at it. But I've tried just about everything. I'm obviously not everything because I asked this guy who was sending the ones, and it came out on my machine, on my Gmail, and everything without the links. And he's coming from a Mac, so maybe Mac Mail doesn't strip away things. But anyway, um, I'll get to the bottom of it. Don't you worry. I'll get. I'll signatures get there. in Outlook is just one thing that they haven't made simple simple enough yet. No. No, it I never, know. It never works the way people want it to. It'll work for a basic text signature, but, that's, but anything more than that, it becomes a struggle. Because one of the uh, one of the instructions is that someone says, oh, how do I make a signature? One of them was, well, yeah, you do your HTML file, you open it up in a browser, then just copy it, like Control-A uh, and Control-C, and then Control-V it in the signature box in Outlook. And yes, it does sort of work. But, but that's where the problem was. It's that pasting into the signature box. Hmm. Yeah, but th that's what I mean. That, that 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 changing it that didn't work either, because hmm. I tried that, that. I tried that way as well, and that was a that was a disaster as well. So I will tell you what, I can't believe and he, and, and Gmail won't take a HTML signature. You know, I didn't spend too much time on that because I didn't want to put it in Gmail. But you might have to store the CSS for it remotely and pull it in. Yeah, well, I've stored the I stored the HTML remotely and and was pulling it in. So I don't know. I, I tried it local. I tried it remote. I don't know. I'm over it. But anyway, let's uh, let's try and get some other things going. Uh, let's start off with some stories. I'll kick off with talking about Microsoft. Microsoft uh, killing off Windows 7. Now, we all know that it's uh, going to die at some stage, and it's got 545-odd days left uh, before the end of Windows 7 support. Uh, that's the official deadline. But uh, some people have been thinking that it might be coming sooner than that. Uh, so it looks like the official deadline will be the 14th of January 2020. What, what's such a peculiar date? I don't know. Why not just the 1st of January? But anyway, uh, so yeah, so in June, Microsoft announced will no longer answer technical problems in the Windows 7 community forums, along with the forums for 8.1 and the 2010 and 2013 editions of Office. I don't know if you've ever gone to these Microsoft forums, but they're all full of gobbledygook anyway. And so it's um, full of what? Gobbledygook. You and your made up words. <laughs> You've heard of gobbledygook before, haven't you? Yeah, why not? Yes. You've but, always got some word to throw in to spice well, it up. Well, it's all gobbledygook. You can't understand, you know, it's all jargon and stuff. But anyway, it, uh, no great loss for those, some of those forums. But in, the mar in March, there was a security update uh, for. Windows 7, Microsoft acknowledged that the update wasn't working in computers running an Intel streaming SIMD extension 2, which is a technology that helps processors handle multiple data elements, making them faster. Now, the issue was that this SSE 2, it's not new, it was released by Intel in 2000 as part of the Pentium 4 processor range, uh, but Microsoft for three months had been saying it was working on a fix. And then until recently, uh, it's now it's changed working on a fix to uh, was replaced by upgrade your machines with a processor that supports SE2. So they're obviously not bothering with that anymore. So that's uh, people are coming to the conclusion that, you know, Windows 7 is pretty much dead in the water. Uh, despite Windows... What a great operating system. We're going to have to have a, have a massive funeral. I remember when Windows 7 came out. They, I don't know if you remember, but they were doing... Microsoft was doing Windows 7 parties. Do you remember that? No. Yeah, you could you could host a Windows Seven party, and uh, you know right. they yeah they'd give you some I don't know stickers and some posters or something, 
Um, yeah, I, I signed up and I did one. Never and, even heard of it. Yeah, right. It was back well, whenever that was, 2007. I think if, I just remember everybody bagging the hell out of Vista and thank God 7 came out. Mm. But Windows 10, because it was a free upgrade and it was pretty... It was, you know, pretty heavily marketed. It took mm. two and a half years from launch to overtake Windows 7. Uh, as recently as December yeah, 2017, latest figures show that 39% of Windows users run Windows 7. So that's still a fair chunk, 39%. 46% run Windows 10. So you could do the math there. 46, 76, 85. So there's still a few other operating systems out there getting a, getting a kick around. Now, Microsoft claims that the, 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 uh, is installed on 700 million devices, including non-PC machines like the Xbox. So 600 million computers still run Windows 7. Many millions must now be doing so on computers that Microsoft has, in effect, abandoned. Yeah, so, well, people are still running XP, so you can see Windows 7 is going to stick on for a while, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, oh, look, you go into it... And, any factory, you know, with a computer-controlled saw or some cutting equipment, you know, one of these big machine things, it's, it's all just XP. It's just all running XP. Because um, these machines, you know, they, they probably upgrade as well and, and evolve over the years. And, like, these machines cost three or $4,000, say. So you're not going to just buy a new machine because you're going to buy Windows 10. And they're not making drivers because they want you to buy a new machine. So, yeah, there's a lot of XP still kicking around. They're mm. all, most of them, I, I would say, they're off the internet, so they're, they're quite safe, but, uh, but you know, that's the go. But, uh, XP but, was great too. I loved XP as well, mind you. Yeah, it was okay. It was Windows, all right. XP, Windows 7, it seems to be they had a good one, then a bad one, then a good one, then a mm. bad one, then a good one, then a bad one. It seemed to kind of go in that rotation, didn't it, with Microsoft? Well, they're not, they're not rotating anymore because I think Windows yeah. 10 is the last one. I think I was kind of grateful for XP. Got rid of ME. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, good old ME. Yeah, look, ME, yeah. Mm. Crazy. How far back do you go, Joe, with your operating systems? I go back to Windows uh, 98, actually. Right, right. Not not to 3.1? Did you get back that far? Uh, I used it for a short period of time, and then it, it was like a, a couple of months, and then I upgraded to um, uh, Windows 98. I think. Well, I was using Windows 3.1.1 on an old Olivetti computer, the old 3.8.6. Right, jeez. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> so I, think, I think I had, uh, I think I started at 98, but um, I I dabbled in 95 on an odd machine here and there, but 98 was pretty much where I started. Mm. I, I actually remember dabbling on those two double discs, uh, what is it, five and a quarter floppy drives, yeah. running Lotus 1, 2, 3. Oh, jeez, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I think the, as far back my IBM, well, that's how they we used to call them IBM compatibles. My IBM compatible days. I think my first operating system was DOS three point three. I think I might have had three point one, but yeah, three point three. I remember Mum having one that you had to. When I was a kid, I was you know obviously when you're a kid you don't pay attention. Not like the kids do these days. They love their devices, but back then we didn't. But Mum and I remember Mum and Dad had a machine that had a, it had a tape. Yeah, you had to load the data off a of tape. That's right. Well, well yeah, my take forever. Well, my introduction to the world of computers when I was I don't know about twelve or whatever, fifteen, and down at the local library they had a tap at Apple II Plus, and that had a tape deck on it, and uh, and then you one... put the load the tape in and it load the data from that was. A... Yeah, that's right. I think those. I, I think, think it was thirty two meg was the size of the hard drive in it or something. Oh, I think that's a bit much. Might have been thirty two k. <laughs> those IBM machines, Probably. those old XTs, they those hard drives were as heavy as I don't know, as heavy as bloody whatever, uh, five bricks, and uh, they were like uh, twenty meg, and they were the size of a shoebox. They were really heavy. And they were Crazy. like twenty meg, six forty. Yeah, I remember that. I used to have a couple of those. Yeah, weren't they heavy machines? Yeah, they they were. And, when, and when they started going, you certainly hear them hear them go clack 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 too. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna see if I can get a. Uh, Let's see if I can find a picture of a... An oh, old... fuck, geeks. No, oh, I know. Let's have to see if I can find a picture over here of an, X, an XT, wasn't it? IBM XT. Let me type in XT. Yeah, and, no and they said back then you won't need anything bigger than 20 megabytes. Yeah, or you won't need more than 640K base memory. Well, look at those, eh? Yeah, there's a few oldies there. I can't see a traditional old... Oh, there's the XT, that thing there. That's, that's the one. 
These are that old and clunky. You know, some of those old those old Macintoshes are um, almost collectible now. You get on eBay and search up those, and they, st- they get good money, some of those really mm. old. Yeah, that's the one I used to use. The one uh, we used to have uh, X-Tree Gold as your, was your browser, uh, was your, um, like file, your file, file browser manager. system. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Lotus one, two, three. Was that was that the equivalent to Excel? That's right. Or oh, the Office. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, what no, was, yeah, sorry, what yes. was the Word? What was that one there? I can't remember what was Word. Uh, I know there was the Lotus Suite. Uh, yeah, Lotus one, two, three. Lotus. Oh, I'll look it up. Lotus one, two, three. Yeah, Lotus one, two, three. I think was like an equivalent to the Excel, but I can't yes. remember what they used to use for Word. Uh, what do we got? VisiCalc. That was launched in 1979 on the Apple. Rivals, Decline, User Features, DOS, Windows, other operating systems. Well, it doesn't really say. Lotus 1, 2, 3. I don't know. But anyway, we, you can look that up yourselves if you if you want to. But yeah, I don't know, Joe. I don't know. I don't know. What, X, what's the, I don't know. It was, it was the password in the early 1990s. Yeah, it doesn't say. It talks about oh, WordPerfect. That wasn't Lotus That's 1, it. 2, 3. That's right. It was, was called it? WordPerfect. That's it. I remember WordPerfect always getting bagged because... You know, like back then, and probably still to the uh, this day, you know, your F function keys, because WordPerfect relied heavily on your function keys. But no, no mouse back then, so you know, it was all keyboard strikes. Uh, the 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 the, um, the WordPerfect did something funky when you pushed F one, and F one used to be pretty generically known as a help uh, key. Like you push F one, you get help. And uh, I remember, yeah, that was just bagged and. Bagged and bagged because everyone's pushing F1. It was I don't know what it was doing, deleting files or something. I don't know what, but anyway, it's doing not what everyone else was expecting it to do. But yeah, it was the white text on a blue background. So yeah, all the yeah. I actually had the the uh, the green monochrome ones. Yeah, right, right. I remember. Oh god, you could go on for hours, couldn't you? I remember. Yeah. I remember had the monochrome screen, and then we got all excited when the orange screen came out. With the orange, oh, text. the orange screen, yeah. <laughs> yes. So you know, our technology advances so fast. Um, yeah. Or well, how do we get to there from Windows Seven? <laughs> I don't know, but looking at that Wikipedia reminds me of, a, of of an old history argument I used to have with my Mac friend. Mm. He used to when when iPads first came out, we used to debate over what was an iPad. Like, was a pad. I don't know, was a tablet a pad or a pad a tablet? And mm. everyone and all my Mac mates used to say, no, an iPad is, is invented by Apple and Apple made made the first tablet. Well, no. Like, no, technically a tablet is that, that's a form factor, isn't it? That's right. Well, as far as I know, Microsoft had a tablet 10 years beforehand or something. Yeah. But, um, but no. I remember, I remember one that used to flip, flip the screen over or was a bit mm. of a design. Yeah, but you know, like it took Steve Jobs to come along and go. Well, people will actually use something that doesn't weigh half a ton, you know, and all this, and they, they he just uh, you know snappied it up a bit. But I was just thinking, you mentioned that iPad. A pad, is, a pad isn't a um, a pad isn't an iPad, is it? it? It's just a pad. Like to me, it's like a tablet, isn't it? Well, a tablet. An iPad isn't like well, throw a, the eye, take the eye away, but is a pad. No, I don't think so. That's a tablet. So is that their their name, iPad? Is that is that invented by Apple? Yes, that would be trademarked. Yes, yeah, because because uh, you you don't see Android iPads, you see Android tablets. Yeah, everyone calls them iPads, though, don't they? It's become almost for that. the uneducated. For the uneducated, <laughs> most of my kids call all their their tablets yeah. iPads. Where's my iPad? Yeah, right, right, right. Well, even though I, it's a Samsung. Well, I guess that's what happens, isn't it? Like, you know, and once you saturate the market, you know, like with, say, with Coca-Cola, you might just pick up any old cola and you're going to go, oh, that's Coke. what are you drinking? Are you drinking Coke, are you? Yeah, but you go, oh, yeah. But it's not. it might be some Aldi cola. <laughs> but, you know, it's just Coke. Well, we looked it's it up Coke. on Wikipedia and we're trying to work out who was the first to invent the tablet. And he, this guy couldn't let it down. I'm like, man, yeah. Microsoft had tablets out before. That's right. Came out. That's right. So they weren't invented that form factor wasn't invented by Apple. Mm. But look, when you mentioned the iPad, I was only just thinking through the week, actually, like coming up to the you know 600 shows. But can you believe that the iPhone wasn't even out when, when I started podcasting, doing this show, when we started doing this show? Like, yeah, that'd be about it, right. It just seems incon- inconceivable that there was a world without iPhones, you know? It's just Because that went, was back before, what, 2007? I think we started 2006, so... Uh, mm. 
Yeah, and here we are. You know, speaking of Apple, I've got a I've got a story on that if you want regarding that. Yeah, did you? Were you had a comment there, Joe? Before we leave that, I was going to say, who remember those Palm Pilots back then? They used to be before the iPhone as well. Yeah, the, the equivalent of the uh, black was a BlackBerry. Yeah, yeah. I had I had a Palm Pilot or a, or a um, what do we call it back then? A, I think mine was called an E something E Pad or an E. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the one. I the one. If anyone's watching the screen, yeah, they're the ones. I used to have one of those too. Yeah, yeah I never, I never yeah. went into those things, but yeah, they. Look I had, all right. mine had a Windows. I think mine had Windows Seven Mobile or something on it. I think. Yeah, yeah, could have. And then from there, just as a normal um, Palm Pad, then they, the, then they went to one that had like a little antenna on it, the one you see there in the middle of your screen, and it was actually a mobile device. Oh, this thing here, this one. Yep. Yeah, and I've actually got the first smartphone somewhere. Um, the old Sony Ericsson. Who remembers those? Oh yeah, well, yeah a long time ago. Aren't they? <laughs> yes. I've still got that. Yeah, right. Oh, well, you got to stick it in the stick it in the, the on the museum shelf, Joe. I have. I've still got it somewhere. I might actually go there and grass grab it and see if I can. Show I was you. I was shocked. I walked into Telstra today and they had a flip phone there, brand new. And I thought, who still makes flip phones? I didn't even know people still wanted them. Yeah, I I always have a laugh because you know we watch Neighbours. So and you know Paul, you're right. Every... I have always have a laugh about the fact that you watch Neighbours too. <laughs> so Paul's on, you know Paul Robinson. Every time he's on the phone, he grabs his phone out, flips it open. <laughs> he's always closing the. It's like little cover thing. It just is so. Um, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. He just must love it. Like him, maybe him as the actor, he might just think that's just the right thing to do. But yeah, it's just funny to watch. It's funny to watch. Um, all right, yeah. What's your Apple story, Jordan? Well, it just says that. Uh, so I don't know if you know about September thirteen for Apple. Oh, so the, the new iPhones, new watches, new look iPad and HomePod Mini, all new products Apple set to unveil. Um, Apple's annual iPhone launch event is confirmed for September thirteen uh, at the Californian H- headquarters. Uh, where, are we, where are we? The fruity, the fruity tech firm will use the Steve Jobs Theatre in its new Apple Park campus to show off a host of new gadgets, including three possible new iPhone models. Uh, here's all the shiny new Very loot we, uh, we expect to be unveiled in just a few days' time. Um, Apple is most certainly going to unveil a trio of new iPhones uh, that retain the Apple X's notch. I wish they'd get rid of this whole notch idea. <laughs> There's a lot of hullabaloo. Um, I suppose we're just not there, quite there to get rid of that notch, are we, technically? No. Um, they're expected to include an iPhone XS, uh, a straight iPhone X successor with the same 5.8-inch OLED display, Apple's new uh, A12 Bionic processor, and its updated iOS 12 mobile software. We're ex- also expected an iPhone XS Plus mm. um, and an iPhone 9. So a more budget device with 6.1 inch screen that uses a cheaper LCD display and could be available in seven different colors. Right. It's unclear what handsets will be called. Um, I'm just giving you the cliff notes. Apple Watch Series 4, another, another, we're expecting another Apple Watch. These are all things that could happen, I suppose. A new iPad Pro. Um, There's nothing like, like this is all you know, fine and dandy, but there's no, there's nothing really new. There's new, there's new newness to the existing lineup, but there's nothing mm. new. Well, what was the the late last new thing must have been the HomePod. Would that be all the, the wireless earbuds or something? There's nothing that new. They're talking about, yeah, there's not. You know, I've just, um, I've just in the chat window, just posted that link to you, Glenn. So if you want to scroll through the pictures of all the devices, you can, but you're right. <laughs> there's nothing, um, there's, there is nothing new. And he says in that article a bit further down how, um, where was it? We've got the, the Apple Home, whatever it is, the, the yeah. Home Pod. Yeah. And he said everything else Apple could unveil would be a new iPhone SE 2 and but, an Air Power, hmm. a new Max and MacBooks, AirPods, Beats over ear, headphones, streaming devices. So. There isn't anything new. It's just kind of re- revamping things, isn't it? Mm. Well, I think like I think that there probably will be new things in the pipeline because haven't they bought out a few or a virtual reality mob and all this sort of stuff? Um, but uh, but look, I've just got a little story about the virtual reality because I thought this was quite cool. It's only real quick. 
Uh, let me see if I can get this on September uh, 13. I might have to stay up all night for that, will I? Well, that'll be on, uh, yes, uh, That's two usually in the morning. What I do for them. I usually have to, can't favor Microsoft and not Apple. I have to watch both, to be fair, don't I? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> stay up to three o'clock in the morning and watch them when, they, when they're live. Yeah. I've done that before with my, uh, when, when I can't help myself. Now, I was, t- I was talking about the, the virtual reality. Uh, yep. How's this? There's a, I didn't know these things existed, but apparently that they are a thing. They're virtual reality water slides. So how hey. cool would that be? <laughs> They're in Germany. You wouldn't, have to get, you wouldn't have to, you know, you know when you have to just kind of test the water with your toe and it's like, oh, it's cold, it's yeah. cold. You wouldn't have to go through that. But this one that I'm playing here, look, I, I looked at a couple of videos. Uh, this one, uh, there's one here at the Germany's theme Erding Water Park. It's a space ride, so you're going down the water slide. <laughs> that and, looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Yeah, and you're in, and you, and and you're virtually in space. So that does look good. There was another video I watched of a, another virtual reality. It wasn't as good. It was a lot more of a cartoon. So they're actually going down the slide with the virtual helmets on. It's not just a virtual reality slide it's the actual slide with the virtual reality helmet that's right it's like what you know you can get on these roller so you, coasters yeah with the virtual the headsets on and then oh i reckon that'd be just a total spin out i think i'd be um you know i'd need another pair of pants i reckon <laughs> because I yeah, reckon would, be, wouldn't you you'd be yeah yeah i reckon it'd be, be pretty fine. scary to start you're with. one thing while you, you're seeing another that's crazy but especially on a water slide because half the time you go around those corners you think you're gonna flip out anyway and so like you, you wouldn't know, would you? <laughs> no. Well, so you know, like you're in, you're you're seeing, and you're in space, and then you will go up a side, and all of a sudden you'll be thinking, "Hang on, I'm in the water side. Am I gonna? Am I flipping up too too high?" Or and what if you what if you fell out of the slide and you were free falling, and you're like, "Hey, what's going on? <laughs> am I gonna hit the water?" <laughs> well, hopefully there's a, a virtual foam mattress underneath you. <laughs> to catch you, but yeah. So that was uh, that was just yeah, just as a side thing. That'd be I... like having um, it'd be like having virtual parachuting, wouldn't it? Jump out of a plane with a with a virtual helmet on and not know when you're going to hit the ground. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the that's the when only. Do I, when do I pull the chute? <laughs> that's the only time I'll be jumping out of a plane when it's virtual. <laughs> so yeah. Um, what do you mean about those water slides, Joe? What, are, they, are they for you? Are you a water slide person? Yeah, I don't mind getting into water slides. Yeah, would you get to do a virtual reality? Oh look, I don't know. I did the roller coaster one once. I don't know if oh. you've ever been on the roller coaster one. No, how good's that? Is that good? It was good, but it did make you feel a bit sick, believe it or not. Um, right. Where was, was that at? Uh, it was one of those uh, shows that I went to. Oh, one of those ex- exp- expedition shows. Yeah. Oh right. So you were you you were sa- seated still, but with the yeah, ro- and, yeah right uh, right yeah that's right. You put a virtual reality headset on, and mm. it takes you through um, the. The process of going up the, the big, you know, hill, yeah. and yeah. then down the other side and around the curves, and it was pretty good. Do they blow in your uh, blow wind in your face? No, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> I remember many, 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 many years ago, back in my younger days, probably tw- you know twenty odd years ago, there was I went to a. I was back in the day. I was running around doing all these. You know, the human. Have you ever heard of the human flywalls and the? bungee running things and all those sorts of things. The attractions. Have you ever heard of those things before? And oh. sumo wrestling suits and all those. Oh, yes. Yeah. I guess we, I've used heard, to go I've around, we used to go around festivals and we, we went to one one year and we were doing the human flywall, which is you put on like a Velcro seat. And oh, yes. Yep. You run and jump off a trampoline and land and stick to the Six, wall. Yes. But when we were there, there was a guy doing a virtual reality. I couldn't believe it back then. Um, a guy doing like a virtual reality downhill uh, downhill snowboarding or right. skiing, right? Something like that. But it was in like a, almost like a like a bus, you could say, with probably twenty people sitting in the chair, and the whole thing was moving, mm. like on big hydraulics up and down, like a almost like a mechanical bull would move, you know. And yeah, right, that's all right. And 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 in the front of it, so everybody's sitting in like a in like a, you know, like theatre seats. Everything's you know looking at this big screen, and you're going downhill, and the whole machine just lifts up. And tips you on your face, and you're going downhill, and everyone's screaming. Oh, yeah, reality. I've seen those. They've got one of those at Luna Park in Sydney. I think they've got one of those in Luna Park at Sydney. Yeah, you hop in it, and the hot, it's like a, like a bus driving down a snow hill, you know, but it's just all done with hydraulics and video. Mm, Amazing. Yeah, like, I think that, that that's the next stage, isn't it, to these thrill rides, uh, is all this sort of stuff. But yeah, I, I've yeah, heard the of roller coaster it. won't actually go anywhere, it'll just be moving on 
things while you're mm. looking at it. Well, they have the roller coasters now, with and you put your goggles on, so you you actually on the roller coaster, but you're somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, but what if you could just be not in a roller coaster, just on a chair that's moving? You don't need to go up or down or whatever. You, you got that feeling of safety. Like you, you got that feeling of you know base safety though. You need to be yeah. you need to be pushed out. If it's on a proper roller coaster, you could come off the tracks. I mean, it's something like that. Oh, you'd be freaking out, wouldn't you? Living on the edge. Uh, look, we've, we've gas banged on heaps this episode, haven't we? So uh, we better get on to Joe and ask him what what sort of stories he's found this week. Uh, this week, I've got uh, Amazon and Microsoft to bring Alexa and Cortana to each other's devices. Oh, interesting. Yeah, apparently Alexa is going to be working on Windows 10 devices um, and Cortana, apparently, um, um, to Amazon's Echo speakers. I thought they already did that. Yeah. The, the, it, or someone like that. I, I, don't, I don't think so. I haven't heard that happen before. Oh, no, I haven't heard I don't think I haven't heard that happening either. So I thought yeah. Windows was going to do it too. Yeah, that's a, they're actually going to be doing that's right. Um, apparently they're saying you just ask one assistant uh, something and it'll open up the other one. The idea behind um, Amazon and Microsoft is that it lets Alexa users uh, queue up Cortana on their Echo speakers and then you'll be able to ask Cortana to let Alexa take the wheel on Windows 10 devices. For example, the uh, Cortana-powered Invoke smart speaker from Harman Kardon. They've got that set up already. Yeah, oh, look, that's probably a good idea. Do you think it'll get to a stage where just all these assistants are in just every device and you just choose which one you want? Well, that, that's what they're aiming for. Um, I, I, that's what I think what they're aiming for. They're trying to aim it so that they're all going to try and be able to work against each other. Um, and With each I other. I think this is just the start of it with uh, Microsoft and Amazon. See, so, the way it's supposed to work is that... Um, the two voice assistants stand to benefit from each other's strengths. Um, for example, Cortana has deep access to Microsoft Outlook email and the calendar data, and Alexa has expansive smart home controls hmm. and um, the growing library of third-party skills. So they're trying to tie them both in together so that they work both together. Yeah, I wonder. I just want wonder how. Uh, so how do they? How is each Microsoft or Alexa making the money? They're probably just what licensing it to the Harm and Carmen, but uh, but you, what? How do they? Yeah, once the license is finished, like is Harm and Carmen Carden? Are they going to pay whatever the license fee is for each year for each device that they've sold? If if the person might not even be using Microsoft, might be using. Oh, I don't um, know how quite how, that, how that's supposed to work. Um, no, it's I a guess, tricky one. I guess it. it yeah, I don't know. I, I guess there'll be something to do with maybe some data that the Carmen Carmen device gets that they have to sell back or mm. allow um, access to it or something like that because that's how companies are making money these days. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter how it's working. It's, there's a common platform or, you know, one device can do three different platforms. Like I know the Sonos have got the Alexa on them now and they're, they're trying to bring in the, in the uh, Google Play, which is apparently is coming. Um, yeah, so I, they must have to pay some sort of license fee, and maybe it's an ongoing thing where, you know, these computers, they're pretty smart, aren't they? They can compute a lot of things at a, at a fast pace. They probably know who's using what and where and probably calculate, oh, yeah, well, he asked for the weather. That's, that's you know, a, a 20th of a cent, you know, that he owes us in licensing fees. Who knows? But, um, yeah, it's all Yeah, look, I don't know. I, I reckon... Microsoft in particular would have to probably do something because if they don't have the assistance from someone like Amazon, uh, it'll be hard for them to catch uh, Google because Google's just at the moment, I reckon, has got the market when it comes to smart speakers and and uh, smart assistants. Yeah, um, the, they, 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 in in the in the in the consumer space mostly. I think the Google's um, got the functionality, but I'm not sure if they got the the, the quality of the hardware. Um, cause I, yeah, I'm, yeah, they have, they definitely, I think their assistant is definitely up there. Cause I'm, uh, like probably the a little, Google, like the, 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 yeah, the assistant ability. Cause it might just be the, the mini, but I'm a little bit disappointed in that. Yeah. Like we were saying last week, I think if the volume's up, it can't hear you. You know, you, you've really got to shout to it for it to be able to hear you. And I don't like that. Um, cause yeah. I, 
and I was reading just an article about these new Sonos speakers coming out, and they said they've got some special dedicated microphone or something. It doesn't matter how loud the music is, it'll still hear you. Uh, yeah, so. that's right. I spoke about that last week when Bose are doing the same thing. That's they're right. trying to, they're releasing a, a smart speaker that does just that. It doesn't matter how loud the volume is, you could still speak um, your normal voice, and it'll still understand that you need to, you know, pick up and and, and listen to what you're saying. Mm. Yeah, but we're talking about Amazon there. I'll just tie this one in. Amazon has joined Apple to become the second US dollar, one trillion publicly listed US company. So that's how massive these people are. Uh, and I just just this uh, got some more stats from Amazon because you think you know you sit down and if you're running your own business or whatever, you think wouldn't it be nice to be able to wake up one day and you got a trillion dollar business? Well, yes, it would be quite nice. But uh, Apple took almost 38 years as a public company to achieve the million dollar status milestone. Amazon's done it in 21. So Apple had a, a fair bit of help from the iPhone. Uh, things sort of just moseyed along and the iPhone just blew everything up, didn't it? Just blew, blew it all apart. Uh, Amazon founded an online book retailer in Jeff Bezos' garage. So that, they've got something similar with Apple. Everything happens in garages these days. Uh so in 1994, starting uh, 5th, May 15th, 1997, the share was $1.50. By October 2009, the share had risen, risen to $100. Uh, just 10 months later, 30th of August, Amazon shares hit $2,000 for the first time. Uh, Amazon shares were last up 1.4% at 2,041.29, pulling back slightly from the milestone level of 2,050. Wow. Dollars. That's amazing. Uh, amazing Amazon. Amazon stock is up 74.5% year to date. In comparison, Apple has risen about 35% in 2018. It's just tipping point now, isn't it? It's just, you know, you get to a certain certain stage, it just tips over. Yeah, look, I, I reckon they both need each other. I mean, like I was saying, if they need to catch Google uh, with, this, with, um, with this sort of thing, they, they really need each other. I mean... Um, they're saying here that uh, the way it's supposed to work is you'll still need to ask each each assistant to open up um, the others before you can control it. Like for example, um, you need to ask uh, Alexa to open up Cortana, and once it does open up Cortana, it then allows you to go through the voice data that goes through to Microsoft and not through to Amazon, and it works in reverse as well. So if you're on the um, Alexa and you want to control something with Cortana, it goes the other way around. It opens up um, Cortana, but then it gets controlled through the Amazon app. Right. So there's some sort of collaboration between them. Mm. Yeah, it'd be interesting uh, like to probably, you'd have to deep pretty delve pretty deep to see how it all, you know, how that, why they are coexisting like this and how it benefits both of them. But it must benefit both companies. So good luck. Yeah, to well, apparently the Echo users at the moment, they can actually enable uh, Cortana skills in the Alexa app. Um, but before you do that, you've got to have a Microsoft account. So, mm. so um, maybe yeah, it could. That sounds really interesting. I mean, I sort of like the idea of that. I mean, could could you imagine, you know, like being on like uh, a Windows PC, for example, and then being able to talk to Cortana and say, okay, buy me, buy me this, and with the power of Amazon, it automatically goes to their. Uh, database and goes through their shopping center hmm. and their accounts and you know and vice versa the other way around you could ask um, Alexa to talk to Cortana and ask it to turn your computer on or off yeah. rather than having to install some sort of smart device. So maybe like yeah, so maybe you know the 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 marriage sort of is uh, is happy because say my, you, on a Microsoft machine as you said you could buy a book from Amazon uh, nice and then maybe from Amazon. All the search, all the search queries might go through Bing or something like that, and then Microsoft. That's happy exactly with that. right. So there's so, a marriage. I mean, at the moment, you've got that sort of collaboration between Google, um, mm. you know, with their Google search engine and their Google, you know, uh, products that they they're selling. Yeah. I mean, I mean you, you look at it. They're, they're introducing the the Google Nest, and they're introducing a whole heap of other Google products to be yeah. able to talk to one another. Yeah, yeah. Look, it, it's it's going to be interesting. Like I, I'm sort of, I've, I've got the Google Me, I've got the Android phone now, so I'm starting. I'm starting to go down the Android smart track here, 
But uh, but you were telling me about those little devices you had, Joe, to make your existing PowerPoints and everything smart. Like I'd be, you know, like you got to get into some of those. Hopefully, uh, you'll tell, be able to tell us about those soon. Uh, well, let's we better just quickly move on. There's another. There's an important one here. Uh, thousands of Magento e-commerce sites have been hit by malware. So if you're running a, a Magento site, e-commerce Magento site, uh, you better have a look at this or have a listen and make sure that uh, you've updated your software, at least updated it. Over the last six months, a recently discovered high prolific payment card scraping campaign managed to infect more than 7,000 online stores uh, running the open open source Magento e-commerce. On 30th of August, a Dutch security researcher, a Willem de Groot, reported that the operation involved online payment skimming malware called Magento Core. Oh, it was nice nice of the malware guys to, to name the, the malware after Magento. Of the 7,339 e-shops found to be impacted, at least 1,450 of them were infected for the entire half year period that the threat has existed. Now, the operation involved online payment skimming, as I said, called the Magento Core. Uh, the skimmers gain illicit access to the control panel of an e-commerce site, often with brute force techniques, then embed JavaScript into the HTML, te- HTML template. The malicious script records keystrokes and sends everything in real time to the Magento Core.net server, registered in Moscow. Additionally, the malware also inserts a backdoor for periodic downloads, removes competitive or competing malware, and changes the passwords of common staff usernames. So update your site if you haven't for a while. Jump in and update it, and hopefully uh, the, uh, things are being plugged. But that's terrible. That's um, that's no good at all. Good on you, Moscow. Yeah, they love it over there. It's too cold. They've got nothing else to do. Uh, so what have you got any more, Joe? Or do you have a comment on that one? Or move on to something right, else? Any more stories? Yeah, I've got more stories, but uh, no, I don't have any comment on it. I don't use Magento on my website. No, look, I, I had used it. I have used it. I've, I've set it up. I've set up a shop with it. It is extremely powerful. A very, very powerful e-commerce site. Like as far as like you can just do so much with different products and uh, the way you can, you know, uh, not just your simple, you know, color and size and whatever but you can just do so much with them it is very very powerful uh and it'd probably be a next step up like from say the woocommerce in wordpress but um but yeah it's it's no good it's uh it's been hacked so update everyone update uh yeah joe keep keep on with the next one okay this is something that i found interesting and i don't understand why i mean i do understand it's all got to do with money but i don't understand why would instagram want to um create a dedicated shopping app for their um, IG store. You know? I don't understand it. Well, how do you mean why a dedicated one? Like one, why yeah, are they creating? Yeah, what they're doing is they're, they're, um, they're testing a dedicated shopping app. The app um, might be called something like IG Shopping. So so are you is the question... Uh, that you're asking is it a, is it because why is it dedicated or why are they doing a shopping app to start yeah, with? yeah why are, why are they doing a shopping app i mean i guess it's all about the money ain't it well yes i, I would imagine that like where do you like all these influence and that are, that are out there and you know people are sharing images of shoes and whatever dresses and glasses wallets phones whatever so i, I guess like if you're just going to share an image and you can somehow easily uh, you know, put a link on there for people to buy. If you've got two million followers and you go check these shoes out, like how many of those le- le- lemmings will just go? Yeah, they're nice. Buy if there's a <laughs> if there's a buy on there. You know, and that's yeah. like, I think that's and you know the, the that influencer then probably just gets a little cut. I, I guess that's how it's well, like Amazon. You know, if you if you redirect someone to the Amazon site and they buy something, a little bit it comes your way. So no, I, look, I guess yeah, I guess so. I mean. It- a story here by The Verge says that Instagram is aiming to let users browse and purchase goods from businesses that they follow on their own platform directly through this app. Mm. There mm. you go. So yeah. apparently businesses are actively leveraging on Instagram's reach for new customers. The official stacks show that there is more than 25 million businesses um, already on Instagram and already 2 million of those are already advertisers. 
Yeah, right. Well, that's where it's all. That's where it, where it's at, isn't it? Instagram seems to be kicking all the goals at the moment. And geez, if you can just buy something while you're swiping like that, yeah, that'd be cool. You know, I put well, a, apparently, there's, apparently, there's brands like Adidas and uh, Aritza, which is apparently a, a Canadian woman's fashion brand, and Lewis Walton are among already some key partners that are already planning on using this feature, mm. um, which apparently is going to be sent out soon. Well, you know what it's like. Like we're all pretty lazy, aren't we? And we're, I think we're becoming more increasingly lazy. So if you if you find a nice perfume, a light, nice little bit of aftershave on the Instagram, you go, oh, look at that. Um, Sylvester Stallone wears brute. Oh, I like a bit of brute. And you know, so you're not going to go and um, maybe you know you might you might be late at night. You know, you think, oh, I can't be bothered going to the brute store and buying it. But hey, there's a buy now button right there while I'm looking at um, Sylvester. Bang, buy door next day. Good. I can't handle it. I think that they're all doing it. You know, even Facebook does it. Like, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting sick of getting on Facebook and Instagram and all these people having shopping things everywhere. It's, it's just crazy that, that, pollution. I mean, exactly. I even jumped on YouTube the other day. Since when did they step that up to two ads before every video? I'm getting tired of all this marketing. Mm. I really am. Yeah. yeah. So that that's my point exactly, uh, Jordan. Why do they need to have another shopping app? You know, like. We already do it in Facebook and, you know, you go, if you go shop on eBay, I mean, these, these ads follow you around anyway. If you go to eBay and look at something, you can guarantee it'll pop up on your, on your Facebook five minutes later. Do you want to have another look at this? You yeah. know, or do you want to have another look at that? Like it's, it's yeah. just I've, I've got a little constantly in your face. Yeah. Um, I mean, the last one I got asked to buy was a, was a, what was it? A female ur- urinal thing <laughs> yeah, right. for women to stand up and urinate. Right. Did you see those things? They look like little trumpets. Yes, I have seen I'm thinking, them. I'm thinking you've got your marketing damn pat. I'm a, I mm. don't I don't need one of those things. Mm. Yes. <laughs> well, you got they got, to, they got to get that right before they start throwing any more commercials at us. We need to make sure they're marketing the right thing to the right person first. What were you going to say, uh, Joe? He is. Well, I was just I was just going to say in 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 uh, what Jordan was saying that you know he hates these things that are keep following them around and popping mm. up ads and stuff. I have the my next story, which I might as well talk about it now. Yeah. Um, Firefox apparently want to use an auto block uh, for ad trackers. Right. Right. Yeah. Apparently. Win, win. Top, yeah. Yeah. Top executives of Mozilla Firefox said in an August the thirtieth post on the company's blog that the near that in the near future Firefox uh, will by default protect users by blocking some sort of tracking. So when it says, I can understand how that was worded. Yeah, protect, tracking, block, all that sort of stuff. But I guess the, the spot is going to be filled with an ad anyway. What? So would you rather be a, a, a new ad, the same ad, don't care ad, or you just want it gone all together? Probably gone no, all together. I'm not sure. I think this will work pretty much like like ad blockers that are um, that you use now when you're watching like something like YouTube and stuff like that. I just think that. Uh, what Firefox is saying, apparently their browsers soon will be able to start automatically blocking some sort of ad tracking technologies. The company claims it impacts page load performance and it shadows and follows users uh, users wherever they may go. It's interesting. I think, um, I think Edge, doesn't Edge do that now, Glenn? It possibly does, possibly. Well, there's like a read mode. I know you can do that. You can click the read mode and it just mm. completely wipes yes. everything else off the page apart from what's relevant. But you can't browse the internet just in read mode, I guess. That's no, what the... I suppose not. But I think like it's a, the little thing I'd pick up from that Firefox chat was that uh, I, I thought Google was a bit of a main contributor or donator towards the Mozilla project. Uh, so it's hard to think that Google would be jumping over the moon to think that they're, they're donating to something that potentially c- could be blocking their ads. So um, I wonder how that's all going to pan out and play out. So. Tell you what, it'd be a good, it'd be a good thing though. There'd be a, I reckon there'd be a few people that would that like it. Mm. But then, you don't have to have all those ads follow you everywhere you go. I mean, and but, like, like Joe was saying, faster browsing, not, even, not having to have all this extra, you know, stuff downloaded into your browser while you, Mm. Yeah, that's right. It, it slows everything down. Apparently, they're saying that uh, um, in uh, Firefox number 57, um, the feature was remained uh, in an opt-in only version, so meaning you had to manually turn it on. 
if you wanted to have that protection. Right. Um, but apparently now in, um, what are they saying? What is it? Uh, version number 63, uh, it'll be on by default, which means you've got to actually turn it off if you don't want to use it. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. But what? What? Who's behind this Opera browser? Because I've I've been hearing a lot about Opera over the last you know month or so. And really? Yes. <laughs> and I did download it and tried it. And it hasn't just, it been around for years? It has. Yeah. It has been around for years. But like, but who? Who's? Who's using it? And it's like, oh, I am I, now. I don't, I don't use it. It's not bad. Probably the same people that are searching Ask Jeeves. Probably. And a, and a good search engine, if you don't like Google, apparently is the DuckDuckGo. Have you ever used that? That's a, that's a search engine that, you know, apparently pretty good. Doesn't track you. Doesn't do any of the, the nasty things. Yeah, but, I've used DuckDuckGo and, and it does do that. It doesn't track you anything, but it also doesn't give you all the search results that you want to. You, you keep going back to Google. You do. And, that, and that's the problem. And even from Bing, like you can type, well, I can type a thing into Bing, get nothing what I'm after. I can type it the same thing into Google and the first result, bang. They've just got it down pat. As much as you might not like Google and, you know, wish that they weren't as big as they are, geez, these other guys, if they want to do something about it, they've got to step up a bit. But got... that's what Google, I mean, Google rule in this market. Well, know. that's right. That's why the others have got to step up. Like, it what... doesn't matter. Like, I think, I think, I don't think you, you can try and step up all you like. I mean, Edge has had a good crack at it. Oh, look, um, I Bing, could... Well, Bing, I should say, has had a good crack at it and they've come mm. kind of pretty close, but. I think, I don't think Google's think unstoppable. It. I think they're they're stoppable, and uh, th- look, I don't know. You know, this is just me having a go. But um, it, it, they're stoppable. If you wanted to stop Google, you could stop them now. But you have to. You probably have to act now. I think they're in a bit of trouble with all this. You know how they're blocking politicians and all this sort of stuff. So they're in a bit of trouble. Uh, obviously, the, the the side of politics that they're blocking aren't happy with Google. They'd be desperate, or not desperate, but they'd be pretty keen if there was an alternative solution out there. If Bing reproduced the same results as Google did, I'm sure people uh, affected by all these this political rubbish that Google and whatever apparently uh, go uh, play into, well then, you know, people would be using the Bing. And I, I don't think they're I think, unstoppable. I think, I think Bing just carries the Microsoft um, stigma. Yeah. Kind of, it kind of annoys me a little bit, but... Well, it's got a... It's and got I a... think Google's kind of a, a middle ground almost between mm. all the big guys. But Bing's so. got an advertising platform and everything. Like it's, yeah. it's the same. It's just it needs to it needs to step it up. It needs to step you know, up. it's like it's like all these music programs opening up trying to take on Spotify. I think once you're at the top, man, it's pretty hard to, you know, you've you you've, you've got the momentum. You That's know? right. Yep. But then again, I could say to you, once you're at the top, there's only one place to go. And that's, that's yeah, and you just got to be careful what shoulders you step on on your way up because you're gonna have to face them all on the way back down. That's right. Well, well, the Opera browser, yeah, that's sure they may have that sort of tracking in place, but um, last I heard was that Opera was then sold to a um, a, a Chinese company consor- consortium, right? Six hundred million dollars. Yeah, right. Yeah, so a lot of people are jumping ship and going back to Firefox because they believe, as in the same way as they believe that Huawei. Mm. is uh, being spied on by the Chinese government. So a lot of people are jumping ship and leaving it. See, so that so there people are jumping ship for for that type of reason. And you've got to look at it and think, well, see, Google's doing a lot in China. Google's opening up a lot of their APIs and secrets to the Chinese government, etc., because that's the only re- that's the only way that they're allowed to operate over there, as far as I've heard. Uh, and well, so uh, it's ready for the taking if someone had a good enough product, I reckon. Yeah, look, Google is no no innocent as well. I mean, I was reading earlier on today that they secretly um, join an alliance with uh, MasterCard. So every time you buy something on MasterCard, Google knows about it, um, and MasterCard um, gives them you know data running off whatever they've bought online and offline. Yes. Yeah. So you know, like, there's really no hiding anymore. Anything. I mean, Mm. you know that. It doesn't matter what you try and do to protect your own privacy. Somewhere along the line, somebody is going to buy somebody else out. Like in the in the case here, you were saying Facebook, um, Jordan. Facebook owns Instagram. Yeah, but Facebook, you know, Facebook stuff up probably more than anybody. But they're still at the top. But you there's know, no, no one. No, no one's ever going to knock them off. Tell me of another another social media platform that's going to knock Facebook off now. 
Well, that's right. That's right. You you have to build something that's you, you yeah. Know, yeah. It's got. I'm a, sure. I'm and sure. I don't think right. you'll get another Google. Another Google. I mean, look at Yahoo's suffering. Yep. They're not going to get back up again. No. Yeah, but you, who who remembers a long time ago when Microsoft and Apple? Who's ever going to beat Microsoft? Who's ever going to knock Microsoft off the top of the ladder? Mm. Yeah, that's and right. they did. They got knocked out because they they refused to change, um, and to go to go with the times. Yeah, now they're doing their well. Rate. They're coming back up again, and yeah, you know, but yeah. they're in a they're in a position where they can. I mean, they're a big, powerful business to begin with. But like, and, I suppose like they're they're saying, I mean, Amazon is well a chance. Bing would, but yeah, and, whether yeah, they yeah, actually will, Amazon, is Amazon, Amazon as well. So. Mm. Yeah, Amazon's another big player. So, yeah, mm. there's I've a, there's... another little story I can throw in if you want. Speaking of um, and uh, Google, before we go, if you want, yeah, you go for it. Throw just in just a, a quick one. Yep, Android's 9.0 Pi September 2018 update released for Google Pixel and Pixel Two phones, and I was really happy to receive it because I I updated my Android to uh, nine or whatever it was when it came out, and I had nothing but trouble. So Google Night has uh, overnight Google has officially released the first Android 9.0 Pi update into the wild with new system images and over the air upgrade files now available to owners of the Google Pixel devices. So if you have one, you're in luck. That's one thing I love about the Pixel is you get all the updates straight up. There's no waiting for ISPs to approve anything. Yeah. Um, owners of the original Pixel and Pixel XL as well as the Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL can download the September update. Uh, full system images um, from the Android developer's site. Uh, in the past, Google recommends full system images as the safest way to upgrade, but these days uh, the over-the-air upgrade is is actually much easier and Google now recommends it. So I'm just reading the highlights, but um, there was one massive fix. Oh, here it is. A Bluetooth car audio fix, and this is what I had problems with the the, 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 the latest Android when it came out. And I don't know whether anyone else has had that problem, but every time they fix the Bluetooth, it gets worse. Right. <laughs> Someone, someone's posted. And I always seem to have to call them up and and, and get it fixed with the inconsistencies. So mm. it's just a post there saying that they've fixed it. And when I looked at the update screen in my phone today, it said that they were fixing the Bluetooth. Yeah, so right. that's good news for anybody on Pixel in, in the uh, Android 9 department. So um, look, my... Might just end on uh, with what I'm going to call the the crazy of the week, and I think this yep. this week it goes to Elon Musk again. Can you believe it? Um, I don't know whether I like that guy or I don't like that guy. I'm, I'm undecided now. Oh, I don't have don't. I have, used to really like him, but I just yeah. hear you know hear things. Yeah, well, I have got no opinion whatsoever. I'm neither dislike or like. I just think he, he's just he's continually just keep going deeper and deeper into this guy, this cave person, the the cave uh, cave yeah. incident. What, yeah, the incident, the cave incident. You know, he, last month or whatever it was, he called the guy the cave. What was he? Not it was a rescuer. He called him a, a, a pedo. You know, on the on the Twitter, he's had to take that down. The guy said he was gonna sue. Uh, and then a little bit of time went past. So then Elon Musk was on on some other talking to a reporter or something. He goes, "Well, he hasn't sued me, has he? What does that seem to tell you? Hey, and, you know, like nudge, nudge, wink, wink. That's because it's true. That's why he's not suing. So, <clears throat> but anyway, so now he's gone. He's gone again. So writing in, in an email into BuzzFeed, he told the reporter to call people you know in Thailand, find out what's going on, and stop defending child rapists. So he's just doubling down and going for it. He He's alleged that this guy had spent decades visiting and living in Thailand and had recently moved to the Chiang Rai in northern Thailand for a child bride who was about 12 years old at the time. It isn't where you go for caves, but it is where you go for something else, he wrote. Chiang Rai is renowned for child sex trafficking. He added that he hoped Mr. I hope that this guy would sue him. Like, tutu. Um, so uh, where's he getting his information from? Is he, does he know something we don't do? I just think it's just crazy, but well, time will tell, won't it? Time will tell. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it's just, cra- I don't understand why. It's the media, I reckon. Yeah. They just got to run with whatever they can get their hands on these days and just blow as, everything as much out of, out of proportion or into proportion, yes. however you want to put it, whether it may be right or wrong, but it is always overdone. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know. He he seems to be, you know, 
pushing the, the barrow down the hill, but he keeps going into the topic. You think so? It was pedo, and then it was the child rapist. Oh my god, I don't know what's going on, but anyway, time will tell. And just quickly, uh, Woolworths is going to trial technology in one of the stores in Sydney out at uh, Double Bay. That will allow a few thousand people registered to the loyalty program to scan and pay for items using just their smartphone. So I bet we all can't wait for that. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's about all there is on that one. It goes on a bit. But you can see the rest of the show notes at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast and jump on in. So that just, uh, well, yes, brings us to the end of this week's episode, to the end of episode 600. So, wow. The most chatty episode of all. It was a bit chatty, but once again, it's light on stories, isn't it? There's nothing too interesting going on. Like, you know, there's stories around, but God, they're boring. Well, I really thought <laughs> that the uh, September 13 article might have been interesting, but I suppose you're right. Yeah, well, that, we'll wait. We just till... have to wait and see if Apple can make it interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> sure as hell, I won't be up at 3 a.m. So I know Michael will be from the Aussie Max Zone. He'll be up at 3 a.m. watching it. He watches them live. So um, I don't. I'll be snoozing. But that sounds good. <laughs> Good. All right. Uh, that's it. Any more comments from anyone? That's it. No, no Facebook. No. Uh, Facebook was uh, just going with it. I think they liked the uh, the Windows the Windows uh, favoritism there on Windows Seven. I think right. that, that kind of people in, people like Windows Seven. Yeah, Windows Seven is good. I've got a. But there's not a lot of comments on there. I think I've got one install of Seven on a virtual machine. That's all I've got. Everything else, well, well Windows 10 was free, so everything else just got uh, pumped up, didn't it? So, so why, Nick why on Facebook says, "Rip Windows 7. Oh, you know, yes, yes. Well, we'll 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 miss it, but we're on to new and better things, shiny and newer. So that's good. All right, cool. Thanks, Jordan. We'll talk no to you soon. See you next week. For 601. We'll do it again. Thanks, Joe. 601. All right. See you later. We'll, we'll see you next week, hopefully, as well. And thanks, everyone, for downloading. Thanks for listening over the, the years. Like, it's almost, uh, well, yeah, mid September or early September. It's almost probably at the a- actual annual event. Well, I think we might have started on the 6th of September back in 2006. So it's a, it's a 600. It's a, it's a milestone in, in numbers and also in, in years. So moving into our, I don't know, what's that? <laughs> 13th year oh my god okay all right and joe just wasn't quite ready to sing karaoke for us tonight and i wasn't quite ready to play guitar so we'll have to keep those little uh maybe no, maybe the seven you can forget episode. it jordan i'm not going to sing karaoke for you. <laughs> we'll, we'll just, maybe on the 700th episode we'll think about it we'll, we'll dub milly vanilli over it joe that's all right yeah milly vanilli as long yeah. as as long as you get the moves going you know, you, we'll, we'll forgive you. We'll dub you. Oh, okay. Thanks, everyone. You catch us on the YouTube uh, for the full video. And uh, thanks, Shane, for the for the video that you sent in. That was awesome. And everyone else, uh, thanks for listening. So we'll see you again soon. Go the Sharkies. See you later. Bye-bye. Not Facebook. See you.